Hey friend, welcome to another episode of the vlog. It's project time, yay! So in today's episode, this is a part one of a several part series. We are beginning the process of upgrading my husband's home office. This has been a long time coming. You know that if you've been here for a little while, I finally got him kicked out of the space. And the first part of the project that we are working on is actually building some built-in um, cabinets and bookshelves to go all the way up to the ceiling. And today I'm gonna be sharing our process of putting the cabinets together, getting them installed. Uh, we won't get, as far as getting them ready for paint yet, we just ran out of time before this video got here, but we've got everything in and I can tell you that this process has been a lot smoother than the process uh, that I did when I built the bookcases in my office and has given me the rejuvenation to actually finish out his office and head back over to mine and finish it out as well. So this is actually the second part. The first part we put up trim, I did not film that or I filmed it and I just don't know where the footage went. So we're actually going to pick up, I'll give you like a glance over of what that wall looks like while I'm talking about the inspiration for the style for the office and then we'll hop into how I got these cabinets inserted. Um, and then in next week's video, we'll go into building the upper cabinets. So let's hop into today's video frame. All right, so before we get started, here's a look at what the office looks like now. Don't worry, all this stuff over to the right, I kick him out, I haven't pulled it all out. But basically this is the wall that we're gonna be building the built-ins on. This wall has power, it is where his ethernet connects into. So there's some extra stuff that we have to add in here too, but this is the long side of the wall, which is probably about 14 feet long. Now here's the inspiration. I'm going for a very modern tr traditional look in here. He's very classic. He doesn't like a lot of showy stuff. I did add some wall trim on the other side with just a little bit of detail, but once it's painted, that detail will just become a part of the wall. But I was looking to do something that would give him storage, allow him to display his stuff for like his football teams and stuff like that, his awards and stuff like that. So. First things first is I have to remove the actual baseboards on this wall. So I'm only removing the baseboards. I'm not gonna remove the carpet. Um, I am still nervous about cutting into carpet because I'm not completely sure how to pin it down. So I never remove the carpet, although I've got a project coming up that I think I'm gonna get the guts to do it. Uh, it's actually a redo of something I've done in the past, but using my multi-tool, I'm cutting the baseboard out and just using um, this little trim pry bar to loosen it up. This stuff was nailed in tight. It took some elbow to get it up out of there. But once we got it out, this gives me um, a clean base to work with. In my office, I did not remove the trim and I should have removed the trim. That's one of the differences and one of the learning lessons that I made from my office to his office is I didn't remove the baseboards and to make the build easier, I should have, which made a world of difference. So I'm removing the baseboards. Hopefully I'll get to use them up top in the trim, but I'm taking these off so that as I'm building the foundation for the cabinets with these two by fours, I can butt the two by fours up directly against the wall, screw directly into the studs and not have huge gaps running behind my cabinets when I put them in. Now what you see me doing here is cutting the two by fours to build the actual structure that's gonna sit on the ground that we're gonna level off that the cabinets will sit on. While I'm doing this, my daughter from college is actually at home. She actually built the cabinets while I was doing this so that the project could move faster. So now that I have the base built, I just went in and butted it directly up against the wall and made sure it was level both ways. Found the studs on the wall 
and screwed directly in the studs so that this would be level and could become the foundation that the actual cabinets were going to sit on. So see, there's no gap behind the cabinets. The walls have textures, so it provides a little bit of space, but it's much better than having that trim left on the wall. That was the number one lesson I learned from the last build. So today we are on um, day two of the office build. And today we are going to finalize putting the actual cabinets in. Last night, here, let me pick you up and turn you around. So last night I was able to get as far as with the help of Jorda, um, building out the cabinets, getting a base in, kind of setting them in place to see where all everything is going to land. So what we've decided here, let me see if I can get close. I'm using this gimbal and it is. Okay, so what we've decided or what I've decided is that this piece right here is a two by four. So I am going to place one, two, three cabinets, uh, two by four width apart. And then from there, oh, hold on. Hello. <laughs> and then from there, the two cabinets on the end, I'll custom cut the two by fours so that at least the middle cabinets will be evenly spaced. This is all about distribution for me. I'm trying to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and it looks evenly spaced. So we can start anchoring in the bookcases now. And then I will likely build the countertop after that and then start working on trimming out the bottom and then put the bookcases up top. It's a lot to do, but we're gonna get it done. So let's hop into day two. So all I'm doing here is measuring the height of the side of the cabinet so that we could cut the trim, not the trim, the two by four that is going to sit in between the cabinets to the length that it needs to be so that we can anchor into it. Now what you see me doing here is measuring out on the two by four and showing my daughter how to use the actual miter saw. She wanted to do some cuts. She had never done it before. So I'm taking the time to teach her while we're building this, how to use these power tools because she loves it. I don't know if it's anything that she'll do anything with, but anytime I'm building a project and she's at home, she is the first one to hop up and say, hey, I'll help. She actually tried to take wood shop at high school and I told her no. <laughs> <laughs> which I probably should have let her do it, but it is what it is. That's the past. We're in the future, in the present now. And she's actually learning how to use the tool. Um, and this has actually really been fun because I've gotten to spend some quality time with her building out these cabinets. And she says that she really enjoys it. Like she's been ready to go longer than I have. Like it would get, come to some parts of the project and I'm like, you know what? I'm over it. We'll pick this up tomorrow. She's like, nah, we're going to keep going. Ma, let's finish it out. So it's been fun working on this with her and it's been fun teaching her how to use these power tools because girls rock. Now that we have our spacers cut, all we're gonna do is go through each one of these cabinets and anchor the spacer to the wall and to the foundation that we built down below. So we use pocket holes to drill into the actual two by fours that we have for the foundation. And we screwed into studs with the actual wood on the wall in the back so that these cabinets don't move. And then once we got those anchored, we actually anchored the cabinets into the two by fours using a three inch wood screw. Now, everybody's helping at this point. My son helped for about five minutes. <laughs> um, 
you know, his attention span is real short. So you got to get to where you're getting fast or you're going to lose him. But it was sweet. He saw me and his sister and him working. He was like, hey, I want to help. So he came in and helped us get the first ones anchored in. Um, and he and his sister kind of bonded a little bit because she was scared of using the drill. And they kind of had a good laugh. It was cute, but he only helped to put this one in. And then he was out of here. It was back to me and Jordan. But I enjoy having them when they want to be present. I don't make it mandatory for them to help me do these projects. So anytime that they're willing to come in and add their muscle or add their point of view, I always accept it. So it's always fun having them around. So here's a quick look at the cabinets with the spacers in between. We were able to drill into the side of the cabinets directly into the two by fours. And this made these cabinets really, really sturdy um, and really not going anywhere. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a one by six or two by six, I'm sorry, to go in between the wall. It worked out perfectly that the measurements of this wall will allow that for that. And then we're also putting the doors together so that we can attach the doors to the cabinets to ensure that once we start putting on the trim to go along the bottom part of the cabinet, that the doors have enough clearance to open and close and not get stuck on anything. Now, word of honesty, we made a mistake and took the doors off after we had fitted them. If you're going to do this and use like Ikea cabinets like we did, I don't know if I mentioned that these are Ikea Brimness cabinets. We started with that just so we didn't have to build the cabinets all the way out. Um, leave the doors on while you're installing the base trim just to ensure that that clearance is there and that the base trim is level, even though things measure level, when you start nailing stuff in, stuff will move, even if you don't see it with your eye, just the force of the nails going into the trim will make it move. So one of the lessons that we learned because mistakes were made and I had to take off some of the base trim, you don't see that yet and I didn't record it, but I had to take it off 
and reattach it just to make clearance for the doors after we put all of the doors on after the base trim was installed and that's because we didn't leave the doors on so we put them on here just to test for sizing and fitting they looked good and we took them off but we should have left them on while we were actually installing the trim along the base to ensure all of the doors were opening and closing like they needed to All right, so once we had our clearance for our doors, we started enclosing the actual structure that we had put together. And this is where we put the base trim in. So the measurements that I have and for the look that I do, I'm doing two layers of trim. So the first layer of trim I'm attaching to the top running directly underneath the cabinets. Um, and that trim I wanna say was a one by five. And then for the second layer of trim, I used a one by four and nailed into it just to give it like a layered look. You'll see what I mean <clears throat> when we get uh, to the end and I give you like a close up of all of it. But even looking at the camera here, you can see that the trim has shifted up just a little bit. And this is actually where we had to remove it to ensure the doors could open and close. But hindsight is 2020. It didn't cause a major issue for us. It's just that if you don't have to redo something, it's always easier to get it right the first time. So just learn from my mistakes. So now we're prepping the top of the cabinets for countertops um, to give the countertop some height. I want it like wide countertops. We're layering in some trim to sit the actual countertops on. I'll explain it more in just a second here, but that's what you see us installing. Um, baby girl pinched her finger, so I kissed it like any good mother would, but we're nailing these in and getting it ready for our countertops to be cut and installed. I'll explain more in just a second what I'm talking about. There you go. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we looking pretty good. So y'all saw us nailing everything in. I couldn't find pre-pined trim right there, so it is what it is. These we're gonna have to prime. Inside, we'll work on priming tomorrow. All the doors and stuff like that making sure everything is ready for paint, but we need to fill holes and stuff first. So we'll work on that later. But now it is time to get the countertop on. And I think I'm gonna rip it down, check it for size, connect it, get it all set up, set it on top, and then decide whether or not I'm gonna stain it or paint it. But so far, we're looking good and we are a lot neater than what we actually did in my office. I might come back with a smaller piece of trim to go on top of that, I don't know. We'll see how things go. But so far, so good. I like it very much. Let's go cut some plywood.
All right, so here's where we are so far. The bottom cabinets are all installed and all cased in. I actually had an electrician come in and run power up over to this middle cabinet because that's gonna be where all of his electronics are and ran it up so that we can do a TV mount. And now we are ready for sanding and all that good stuff. We'll talk more about that in just a second. All right, friends. So now that we have the base of the cabinets put in, um, what we need to do now um, is sand everything down. We've taken the doors out just so we can start to prime everything. The goal now is to get everything primed and ready for paint before we start building the second part of the bookcase. We probably won't do that on camera because that is just what it is. But my daughter and I are gonna go ahead and get everything sanded, get the ba the cabinets sanded down, get the doors primed, shelves primed, the inside cabinets uh, primed because they're Ikea, so that when we bring in the second half of the built-ins, all we have to do is put them in, attach them to the wall, fill a few holes, and not have so much cleaning to do at one time. So really pleased with the progress that we've made so far. Um, I'm really proud of the time that we've taken to actually take our time to put this together. This build is a heck of a lot neater, uh, even though it's taken a longer time than what I did in my office. And I won't say it's neater, but I just feel a lot more confident in the structure of, not that the other one isn't structurally sound, like the tabletop is just two pieces that will look like one. There's some things, some, some improvements that I was able to make with this being the second time that I've taken on this type of project and I've really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to tackle the uppers. Uh, from what I've seen, it's probably going to be a lot more straightforward than what's happened here down at the base. But the progress that we've made in this week has been really, really good. He loves it so far and I'm really looking forward to seeing his reaction as we start to pull in the upper cap, upper bookcases and stuff like that. Um, the space is going to be amazing and I can't wait to share it with you. So be sure to tune in for next week's episode. Um, if this releases before Christmas, which is the goal, I hope that you and your family have the merriest Christmas ever. If you celebrate, I hope your holidays are full of love, joy, cheer, all that good stuff. If I don't see you before New Year's, um, happy New Year's. Um, if, if this time of year is a time of year that is not as happy for you, know that we love you, we care for you, and that our family is praying for you. Um, and we're sending you lots of big hugs and snuggles around this time to make things better. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode, and I can't wait to see you in the next one when we start putting in the upper cabinets or the upper bookshelves uh, to kind of finish off this part of the build. See you in next week's video. Bye now.